This lesson is a quick lesson on sex-linked uh, traits as well as multiple allele traits. Um, in the previous lecture, we talked about codominance, uh, about dihybrid crosses where we have several crosses coming together. So this one will be relatively short. Um, and as I said, it's dealing with sex-linked traits. So to start off with, um, sex-linked means that it has to do with gender. And just as a reminder, we have XX, which is female, and XY. And if you remember from the karyo, um, uh, in terms of those karyotypes that we were looking at, the X chromosome is actually a pretty big chromosome compared to the Y, which is a very small one. And the X chromosome carries different genes than the Y does. And this is going to become very important um, when we deal with uh, sex-linked traits. So let's work with um, a sex-linked trait called hemophilia. Hemophilia is um, a condition where you don't have a clotting factor in your blood, which means just a small paper cut can cause you to keep on bleeding and bleeding and bleeding, and in some cases, uh, actually even bleed to death. So um, hemophilia is a sex-linked trait, and what that means is this, is that it is a recessive trait, and because it's a sex-linked trait, we write down um, the letter X because it's carried on the X chromosome. And then we have a little allele letter, which is similar to what we've been using all before. And a small letter, of course, is we have the recessive allele right here. And our recessive allele is that um, it can cause hemophilia as opposed to being normal. Now let's go through a couple of the options of what exists here. So we can have a female. She is XX, which means that she carries this uh, gene on all of her X chromosomes. And so the female could be big R, big R. Remember, big R stands for uh, the norm, normal trait. So in this case, there would be no hemo. I'll just write hemophilia because she shows the dominant trait. So th in this case, you have the female being big R, little r, but because it's a sex limb trait, we use that X to show that it's a sex limb trait. In this case, again, remember normal is dominant. There's no hemophilia. And then female can also be little r. And little r, again, we keep that X there because it's a uh, sex link trait. In this case, this female does have hemophilia. Now with the males, this is the important part with males. Remember, males are XY. And sex link traits are only carried on the sex chromosome. And in this case, it's only carried on the X. It is not carried on the Y. So here is our R. There is no R here. So for that reason, a male can be big R, and then the Y doesn't contain anything. So in this case, this is a normal child, no hemo. Okay? There's another version of the male where it's little r with the X and the Y, and this individual does have hemophilia. Okay? So there's no other options. Remember, it cannot um, have an R on the Y because the Y doesn't have that gene. It doesn't have that piece of DNA in it. So this allows us to do some predictions, and this is what genetic testing is all about, of how likely are you going to have a child that can have hemophilia. So let's do a cross. Let's say we have a homozygous dominant female. And in this case, the sexes really make a difference. We know it's female, homozygous dominant, and she crosses with a male that is hemophiliac. All right, so let's identify what mom and dad are. So it looks like the female should have a genotype of big R, big R. She is homozygous dominant female. Now, you should instantly go, wait a second, that's not written the right way because she is female, and I know this is a sex-linked trait. 
So I make sure I have X, X, that's the female, big R, big R. Okay, so don't fall into that mistake of not having the X involved. Um, I will tell you if it's a, a sex link trait. Sometimes I won't, and you just have to kind of figure it out from the data. Okay, the male, though, we know is hemophiliac. Remember, the hemophilia gene, or the blood conding gene, is not on the Y chromosome, so he is little r and y. Okay, because he's hemophiliac. So now, if they have children, what is the chance of them having a child that has hemophilia? So we have our female here. All right, our male here. And if I do a combination, you'll see that all of the children have the dominant allele, so no hemophilia for the geno uh, phenotype. All of them are 100% normal. But in this case, when you have an individual that is heterozygous, we call them carriers, okay? And they are a hemophilia carrier because they carry the recessive allele, but it's not shown. They simply carry it. So in this case, this will be a good cross. Even though the male is hemophiliac, it is impossible if the female is uh, homozygous dominant that they would have a child that is hemophiliac. Now, how about this case? I have a heterozygous female and she crosses with a normal male. And so in this case, people are like, well, that should be fine. She doesn't show hemophilia. She's just a carrier. And he, clearly, it doesn't have hemophilia. So let's put down what their genotype is. So if she is a carrier, that means that she is big R, little r. She's heterozygous. The male, remember, is simply the XY, it's only on the X chromosome, and this is something that is the most common mistake students make. Let's see what that Punnett square looks like. So we have X with a big R, X with a little r, X with a big R, and Y. So in this case, we have the possibility of a girl, um, baby, who is uh, not going to have hemophilia. The boy does not have hemophilia. The girl will not have hemophilia but will be a carrier and the boy will have hemophilia. So as you notice it's actually with sex link traits more common that boys are impacted than there are girls and that is because the girls have two alleles so if one of them is recessive there's a better good chance that it could be cancelled out by the other one. So hemophilia is most commonly found in males. So that sums up sex link traits. Couple of things you need to know. Always be sure that you use the X and the Y. And always, the second thing is make sure that the Y does not carry the trait because the gene doesn't exist on that chromosome. The next one we're going to be working on are multiple alleles. And the only one that I want you to work with is the blood um, typing because that's the most common one. Uh, that people are familiar with. So I'm sure you've heard that you have blood type A, blood type B, or blood type O. So let's talk about what those blood types really mean. So if you are blood type A, that means that you have um, a certain protein on your red blood cells um, that indicate the A protein. And then there's the B protein, and if you are blood type O, it means you don't have that protein. So let me draw what that actually looks like. So if you're blood type A, let's do a drawing. Oh, and then we have AB. And o. So in this case, here's your cell, and it has a lot of blood type A protein. 
we literally put an A here, okay? If you are blood type B, that means your blood cells have the protein B on their cell membrane. And you remember how there were proteins on there. If you are blood type AB, that means you have both of them. And if you are blood type O, it means you have no protein. All right, so how does the genotype look like for someone who is blood type A? So what we do is we use the letter I for multiple, let, uh, multiple alleles. And it can be lowercase or uppercase. It makes no, actually, it is, does make a difference. In this case, if it's an uppercase I, it means that it carries an allele. So in this case, I can have, like in the sex link traits, big A, big A. That would give me the blood type of A. Or I can be big A, little I. Okay, that means that there is no protein made. And we'll sh show you what that looks like for the blood type O. Blood type O has no protein, so there's only one genotype. It is little i, little i. It's not making the proteins. For blood type AB, that means you have protein A made from this gene and protein B made from this one. That's AB. For B, we have B or B and B and little i. So the little i simply represents that it doesn't make the protein. The letter here tells you which protein the gene codes for. So those are blood types. All right, so now let's do some crosses. And let's see if I can get onto a screen. Oh, we'll just erase this. Okay, so if I have someone who has blood type A crossed with someone who is blood type O, what are the possible children we can have? And I'm going to have it be blood type A looking like this. I will always give it to you or you will have to figure it out um, based on what children you have. So blood type O, I won't give you the genotype because you know there's only one type of genotype, and of course, that's little i, little i. There are no other options, so you can only get little i, little i. For blood type A, we have big A, and I gave you that it has a little a. So what sort of children um, are they going to have, or better said, what's the probability of their children having specific blood types? So we do a quick Punnett square. And we notice that two out of four are going to have the genotype of big A, little i, and two out of four are going to have the genotype of little i, little i. All right, so that means that you have, in terms of phenotype, two out of four being blood type A, and two out of four being blood type O. So that's simple Punnett square for these here. So let's take a look at maybe something that is looks a little more uh, unusual. Let's say we have someone who has got blood type AB crossed with blood type O. Let's do a little I. Okay, so in this case, actually let's do it more interesting. We'll do blood type B. So in this case here, I have again one parent being blood type AB. So we place it like this. So in this case, we have the probability looking like this of what their offspring is. So in this case here, it looks like we have one out of four having the genotype of AB, which means that they have the blood type in terms of phenotype of AB. We have one out of four having this genotype, so that it looks like they have blood type A, and we have two out of four having some sort of, excuse me, one type out of four being that genotype, they are blood type B, one out of four being 
having a genotype of this, that is blood type B. So in this case, you have two out of four.